Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah McLean, and I'm excited that you're here for the first Sunday of the month. So welcome. It's March and I'm in sunny Santa Barbara. So what we do each month is we have a meditation and it's just an offering so that you can experience a variety of practices from wherever you happen to be, whether you're listening to me live or if you're listening to a recording on YouTube. I'm really glad you're here. Today, uh, we're going to be working with a, um, a practice called the Wheel of Awareness, first discovered, let's say, and made popular by Dr. Dan Siegel. And for those of you who don't know him, he's a beautiful teacher of awareness. And I was lucky enough to be with him in England. We were actually at Isaac Newton's house, and we were sitting under, believe it or not, the apple tree where Isaac Newton first started to think about gravity. Now that I that apple tree is still there from hundreds of years ago. It had been hit by lightning, fell over, and is continuing to grow. And so Dan Siegel was there, it was in England, and a, a number of us were there with him. And he took us through what's called the Wheel of Awareness practice. Now, I have been meditating for over 30 years. And I can tell you there are so many ways to meditate. But mostly, every meditation has three ingredients. The first ingredient is your willingness to do it. And I think you've got that because you're here. And usually that willingness is accompanied by some sort of intention. Now, maybe you have a personal intention like um, you want to feel better if you've been going through emotional struggles, or you want to be more focused if you're wanting some mental uh, upgrades, let's say, or maybe you're in the midst of an emergency or some sort of crisis. And some people meditate because they want to feel better. They want to navigate whatever the challenge is, whether it's a divorce, a death, or a diagnosis, or some other interruption in your otherwise peaceful life. And people are often turning to meditation because of that. So for whatever reason you're here, every meditation requires your willingness, and that's usually accompanied by a desire of some sort, whether the desire is for peace, whether the desire is for harmony, whether the desire is for healing, whether the desire is for enlightenment, it doesn't much matter. For those of you who have never meditated before, you're here for some particular reason. And I'd like you to think about what it is you hope to gain from your practice. Maybe you come up with a word or a phrase. For those of you who have been meditating for a while, you may, may have noticed that perhaps your intention has changed over the years. I think initially I was learning to meditate because I wanted to get along and get along with my boyfriend. And I had such debilitating anxiety that he said, look, if you want to stay my to be my girlfriend, you're going to have to learn to meditate. Because he knew that meditation was going to quell this anxiety of ex existence, really. And that anxiety would take over and I was unable to be present for him. So my initial reason for meditating was so that I could be in relationship as a normal human being. But it has since changed over the last 30 years. And so if I were to articulate my desire, it's really to have peace on this planet. So yes, it's gone from the personal to the more global. Um, and so for you, I'd love to invite you if you, have, if you want to, is to put in the chat what it is that you hope to gain from your practice, not just today's practice, but from your daily practice, whatever it might be, enlightenment, peace on earth, uh, community, health, uh, more more emotional uh, satisfaction, maybe a sense of contentment. Maybe it's the only thing that helps you feel like everything's going to be okay. Whatever it is, I invite you to put that in the chat. So as I had mentioned, the first ingredient for any meditation is your willingness to be here, which is often accompanied by a desire. That desire can change over the years. Now, and for those of you who have been in the world of meditation, yoga, 
you may notice that um, you may have heard of some meditation called yoga nidra. It's kind of called yoga nidra. It's like the yoga of sleep, but you're not actually sleeping. But what they have you do in the beginning of a yoga nidra practice is they have you identify your sankalpa, your heart's desire, your resolve to do the practice. So we can even consider that the first ingredient to any meditation is your willingness to be here, which is accompanied by a sankalpa, your desire. The second ingredient to any meditation is your gentle awareness. It's that which is listening to me now. It's that which is looking through your eyes. It's this awareness that you're wandering around with and have been for your entire life. Now, the awareness we use or the attention we use in meditation is very gentle. There's no need to have superhuman powers of concentration, although that may happen over time. Um, but it's really just an ability to attend to. And what will we be attending to? Well, in this wheel of awareness meditation, we're going to be attending to a whole lot of things. I will share with you in a moment. Actually, I can share it with you now. This wheel of awareness is, oh, can, I hope you can see it. Can you see it? Yes. This wheel of awareness has you attending to your senses, your interconnection, your mental activities, and your physical body. So this is the wheel of awareness meditation. But in meditation, and this, the third ingredient, so first is your willingness to be here with a sankalpa. The second is your gentle, non-judgmental attention. And the third is what you pay attention to. So you're the subject and everything else out there is the object. And so what really where the disharmony comes in in our lives is the space between you and your awareness and that what you're paying attention to. So this meditation is a beautiful one because you can become a little bit more aware of the mental activity, uh, activity of maybe disharmony, judgment, wishing things were different, um, some sort of disturbance in the field, let's say. So I'm gonna teach you how to do this practice in a little bit, but I wanted to share, those are the three ingredients, your willingness to be here, your gentle non-judgmental attention, and that which you pay attention to. Now, there are many types of meditation, I know some of you are aware of mantra practice, chakra practice, breath awareness, body awareness. So those are really just a shift in what you're paying attention to. So I want to share with you the five essentials for any meditation, because when I first learned to meditate, I didn't think, I didn't know what to do. I knew I had to pay attention to something, but I didn't know what would happen if my mind would wander or I'd start getting sort of caught up in a story or a dream. So what I know now is that when you notice your mind is distracted by something other than what you're doing, you know, you're otherwise occupied, is to come back again and again and again to the focus of your meditation, all the while being kind to yourself. Third, the, so the first uh, essential is it's okay to have thoughts. Just keep coming back. This is where the training comes in. The second essential is to be kind to yourself. Do not spend any of this time we have together or any time at all beating yourself up. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's not good for your emotional health. And in meditation, what we're doing is we are practicing how to pay attention. We are practicing how to be kind. We are practicing how to be non-judgmental so that when you're not meditating, you can be paying attention kind, non-judgmental. And also in meditation, the fourth essential is to let go of expectations. Let go of expecting how things are going to go. Let go of expecting how you're going to feel. Let go of expecting results and simply be with the practice. It's a little bit like falling asleep. You know, you let go of how that's going to go because you know if you're trying too hard, or thinking it should be a certain way, that you're going to kind of interrupt the natural flow of falling asleep and being asleep. So we don't try too hard to have any particular experience other than the one we're having. And lastly, we're gonna stick with the practice. 
Now this practice today is gonna to be about 20 minutes and I'll be keeping track of the time. So let me just, wanna just make sure I can see that you're here and that you can hear me, see if there's any questions or comments. Okay, so let's get comfortable. Let's get comfortable. Let me just, uh, here we go. I'm just opening up my screen, this wheel of awareness. I'm sorry, it's a little crazy. My, I had a technology problem earlier, so I don't know how to do it, but we're just going to go this way. Okay, let me just do this one more time here. Here we go. Okay, here we go. I can see it better now. Okay, so let's get comfortable. And in meditation, really and truly, it's ideal to get as comfortable as you can while sitting up. So th throughout this practice, if you can, let's sit comfortably upright, relaxed, and aware. Ideally, you can have your eyes closed. But if you need to, you can simply gaze to the ground or toward your hands. And throughout this practice, you're going to be breathing naturally. You're going to be sitting comfortably and you're sitting with your eyes capped or closed. But if you need to move or scratch an itch or cough or any of that, you can certainly do that mindfully. So I'm going to invite you to find your meditation position. And before we settle into breathing naturally, I'm going to invite you to take some deeper breaths, ideally through the nose. Breathing in slowly and fully. And breathing out slowly and fully at your own pace. Three long, slow, deep breaths. This sends a signal to your body that it's okay to re relax as it activates the vagus nerve through the longer breaths. Three long, slow, deep breaths at your own pace. And then allowing your breath to return to its natural rhythm and depth. Now throughout the meditation, your breath may change. It might get faster or slower, deeper or shallower. We're not trying to regulate or control the breath in any way. We're simply allowing the breath to be right here, right here. So imagine that you are the hub of the wheel, whether it's a wheel of a bicycle or a car, that you are the hub of the wheel. And the wheel has an outer rim. So the hub of the wheel is your gentle awareness, the spaciousness of paying attention. And the outer rim is that which you're paying attention to. So for the first part of this practice, we're going to be paying attention to how the outer world is through the five senses. If your eyes are closed, you can still tune in to the light that's coming through your eyelids, to the sense of the inner sight, the inner light, or the actual light if your eyes are capped and gazing downward. There's your attention and then there's that which you are paying attention to. What you see in your mind's eye, the actual light coming through your eyelids. Now notice if you can any kind of judgment or ideas 
or any kind of thoughts that come along with you paying attention to what you see. And simply let those drop as you become aware of what it is. Welcoming everything, resisting nothing, and perhaps avoiding commenting on your experience. Now you can pay attention to how you feel. First, we'll do it physically. Noticing your sensations on your skin, whether it's the clothing draped over your skin or the air on your skin. Noticing where your body meets the floor or the chair, those areas of connection. Simply noticing without judgment, the various sensations of sitting right here. The sensations of breathing. and the way the body moves with the breath. And also tuning in to whatever emotions or feelings that are here right now, without resisting or wishing they were different. You're simply witnessing what is here without commentary or wishing things were different. Next, let's pay attention to what we hear. You might notice sounds in your immediate environment Begin to notice the soundscape where you are. The sounds far away. The sounds close to you. And even the sounds interior, like the sound of your breath. Begin to listen to the sound of the sounds rather than trying to identify the source of the sound. Noticing how some sounds come and go. Some sounds seem constant. And if you start to judge what, whether you like the sounds or not, simply go back to the sound of the sounds. How some sounds arise from the silence and return to the silence, just like my voice. Welcoming everything, resisting nothing, and resisting the urge to judge pleasant or unpleasant sounds. Shifting your attention now to whatever you might notice in terms of aromas in your space. Though they're subtle, they might arise when you start to pay attention to them, like the smell of freshly washed hair or coffee or perfume, aftershave, whatever it may be. And if you don't notice anything, that's perfectly fine. Noticing the aromas without judgment.
And then we'll shift to taste. Observing the taste that's in your mouth, if there are any tastes, flavors. You might allow the, to the tongue to move around inside your mouth or even open your mouth and let the breath travel over the tongue. Now we are going to move the spoke of our awareness toward our interior, the interior of the body. As you bring your attention to the body, just allow it to relax just a little more, lowering your shoulders and softening your face, feeling the support of the chair underneath you or the ground beneath your feet. finding comfort in this moment, but noticing if there's any part of your body that's calling your attention. Calling your attention from the hub of this wheel to the sensation of the body. Whether you notice movement or pain, any tension in your muscles. Any sensation in any of your organs. You might invite your stomach to soften, your diaphragm to let go of any tension. And perhaps invite a deeper breath to notice the sensations in your lungs, in your windpipe. Remaining free of judgment, simply noticing and witnessing what is here. Perhaps you feel some aliveness. Perhaps you feel some tingling in your fingertips or your heartbeat or a pulse. Witnessing every sensation without resistance. And if a judgment arises, simply tune into the actual experience. What is here? The breath, the heartbeat, the warmth, the coolness. Nothing needs to change. Begin now to notice your state of mind. If there's any subtle or overarching emotion that's present. Begin now to notice your thoughts. Notice how they arise and dissipate. Notice if they move quickly or slowly. 
or if there's a space between each thought. Notice if there's an undercurrent of a belief about yourself or the world. And if you can find it. Simply noticing the activity of the mind and the content of the activity without judgment or resistance. Now taking that spoke that you've been directing outward and towards your mind and turn it back toward you, toward the one who's paying attention to the body, to the senses, to the mind, to the thoughts. Turn your attention to you, the thinker of the thought, the awareness itself. Who is the one who's paying attention? Who is the one who's witnessing the movement of the world around them? Who are you? Again, you can bring the spoke of your attention outward. Begin to notice the space between you and the objects around you. With your eyes closed or lowered, simply sensing the space between you, the desk, the window, bringing into your awareness your relationships between you and perhaps the people in your home or your loved ones. And consider that your attention, unadulterated, pure, witnessing attention, could possibly be love. So as you bring your attention to your relationships, you're simply calling them to you in love. Your friends and your family, your pets and your plants, That love is the bridge between you and everything else. Letting your awareness expand to include your community. The people who may live near you or who you, whom you work with.
It might be like a movie or a slideshow in your mind's eye. There's nothing you need to do, simply being aware, letting your attention rest on everyone in your community that comes to you and knowing that the bridge between you and them is love. Let your awareness reach around the globe if you like. Perhaps to people you know or you believe are suffering. Perhaps your gentle attention is like a prayer. A prayer for peace, a prayer for compassion, a prayer for love. If you notice your mind wants to tell you stories, simply let the bridge of your attention be the love, the healing, the wholeness. You might even begin to include your awareness of animals or plants, whether they're right outside your door, those neighbors that live near you that you might not consider on a regular basis, the trees, the birds. So see if you're, you can radiate from the hub of your awareness this sense of welcoming, love, connection between you and the world around you. You might even feel a sense of light that shines from you and illuminates everything you're aware of. And returning your attention now to your breath. Feeling the natural breath move in and out of the body. You might imagine that each breath brightens your light, enhances your glow. and brings forth your loving nature. We'll sit like this for just another minute. I'll keep track of the time.
Now letting go of the need to do anything. Simply rest in being. Resting as gentle awareness. Resting as the still point of love and peace. As you rest here in this field of silence and love, invite your desire, your sankalpa, the phrase or the word you started with today. And simply imagine that you already have what it is you came for. Simply imagine you've received it. Imagine the feeling of fulfilling this desire that it's been made manifest already. And I will be coming out of meditation slowly as you keep your eyes closed. Bring your awareness once again to the body. Invite some movement, perhaps some deeper breaths. You can roll your shoulders or wiggle your fingers and toes or stretch into the space around you as you keep your eyes lowered or closed. Begin to listen to the sounds around you with that non-judgmental awareness, letting everything be as it is. When you feel like you'd like to open your eyes and welcome the world around you with sight. You can first open your eyes and gaze to the ground, letting a little light in or out. And when you feel ready to open your eyes all the way, feel free to do that at your own pace. There's no rush. I want to thank you for joining me today, for being a part of creating more peace on this planet. This meditation truly is the practice of beginning within. What we want to see in the world, we can cultivate in our interior. So thank you for joining me today. Hopefully we'll see each other again soon.